Thank you. Okay. A man betrothed a woman by himself or through an agent. A woman is betrothed by herself or through her agent. A man gives his daughter a condition when she is a Nahara by himself or through his agent. If one says to a woman, betrothed to me with this date, betrothed to me with this one. If one of them has a vow of a bruta, she is betrothed. If not, she is not betrothed. If he says with this and with this and with this, and there is the value of a true chain, all of them, she is patrolled. If not, she is not patrolled. If she was eating them one by one, she is not patrolled unless one of them has the value of a true If a man said to a woman, be patrolled to me with this cup of wine, and it was found to be of honey or of honey, and it was found to be of wine with this dinner of silver, and it was found to be of gold or of gold, and it was found to be of silver, on condition that I am a rich man, and he was found to be a poor man, or a poor man, and he was found to be a rich man, she is not betrothed. Reb Shimon says, if he deceives her in her to her advantage, she is betrothed. Betrothed to me on condition that I am a Kohen, and he was found to be a Levi, or a Levi, and he was found to be a Kohen, a Nissanite, and he was found to be a Mamzer, or a Mamzer, and he was found to be a Nissanite, a townsman, and he was found to be a city dweller, or a city dweller, and he was found to be a townsman. On condition that my house is close to the bathhouse, and was found to be distant for to be distant or distant and was found to be close on condition that I have a daughter or I have a slave who makes braids and he does not or on condition that I do not have and he has on condition that I have no sons and he does have or on condition that I have and he does not in all these cases although she said I am I intended to be betrothed to him nonetheless she is not betrothed and the same applies if she deceived him okay. all right all right Mr. So a guy says to his shaliach, So he says, there's this girl that I want to marry. Take my kiddushin and, uh, and do the kiddushin in uh, Tel Aviv, where, wherever it is. He says, but he says, do the, uh, marry her, do the kiddushin in Tel Aviv. So he finds her instead in Rishon Etzion, and he does the kiddushin there. Eina Mekodeshes. He has violated his shlichus and he's no longer a shaliach. Yeah. So he's um, so so then the so the kiddushin is is ineffective. Okay. It doesn't it say? Wait, I must have missed something. I remember on my head. He went in betrothed in a different place. He's not betrothed. If he said she is in such and such, I, a, I, have, I have I haven't said that yet. Okay. He says I'm going to do kiddushin uh, uh, for uh, on this woman. She's in Tel Aviv. Okay, the kid Shabbat Makom Acher, and now he finds her in Rishon Lezion. Parades of Kedushas. That's not a violation of the Shlichus because it's not that the that the sender told him, Dafka, I want this to happen in Tel Aviv because you know, there might be some sort of motivation. If he says do the Kedushin in Tel Aviv, it's because he wants the people of Tel Aviv to see that the Kedushin is happening there. But if he's just giving the the Shaliach advice and saying you'll find her in Tel Aviv, then mm -hmm. and, and he finds her in Rishon Lezion. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, the, this Mishnah actually we've seen quite recently. I, I, exactly the same Mishnah is found in Kusubos. Um, he does Kiddushin on her on the Al Tanai that she has not, that she doesn't have any Nadarim hanging over her. The name to Ualeha Nadarim, and it turns out that she Taka does have Nadarim. The Tanai was not fulfilled because he specifically made a Tanai and the, and the Tanai was not fulfilled, therefore, there's no condition. Kanasa Stam, however, if he just um, just married her without any preconditions, the Nimtu Alea Nadarim, and it turns out that, the, that she had pre existing Nadarim before they got married, it doesn't invalidate the condition, but it is grounds for divorce. And he may divorce her and not pay out her Kisubah. Yeah, because she she didn't disclose it, he wasn't he wasn't aware, and that's uh, and and the dharm that affect that affect the marriage clearly um, are, are things that, uh, that that's a grounds for divorce. Almanas she'en ba mumin. If he if he says okay, the condition is on condition that you don't have any mumin. 
to the name to that moment, and the Kadeshas, same thing over here, the condition was not fulfilled. Uh, he made a condition on, on a Tanai, and the Tanai was not fulfilled. Tanasa Stam, if he just married her Stam without saying anything, the Nimtu of Amun, and it turns out that she has that she has uh, some kind of mum. Again, he may divorce her without paying out the Kisuba. Okay. And what's a, what's considered a mum? Call a mum in a postim bequanim, postim benashim. Okay, anything that's uh, that would that would invalidate a kohen from service is something that would invalidate that, that would that would be grounds for a, a man to divorce his wife without paying out the kisuba. And we saw that again. In, we saw that in, in kisubas recently. So we move on. Amakadesh shtei nashim b'shavaprota. So a guy goes up to two women. And has a and has a shavu prutta, and he gives it to them jointly. Like let's say, for example, it's in a it's in a basket, and yeah, and he gives it to them, and they both take hold of the basket simultaneously. Um, so so now they so, so now they take uh, it, 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 is a shavu prutta enough to marry two women? Afraid it's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a marriage. Or isha achas the shavu prutta. Or he, he tries to marry one woman with uh, with something that's less than a proto. Okay, so so this kiddushin has not been affected. Right. What, what was traditional in those times when they were when they did the kiddushin like a year before the nisuin, right. that after he marries the woman, he'll send he'll send gifts. Right. He's sending he's sending gifts throughout the year to to her in her father's house to to remember. Hey, I haven't forgotten you. Looking forward to marrying you, whatever. So, he, so now he's sending these gifts. So she thought she was married. He thought she, he, he thought he was married, and he sent her this whopping big gift now, which is more than a prota. prota. Uh, okay, but that's not. But that that will not be a kiddushin either. Even though, though he's giving her now more than a shavu prota, she machmas kiddushin harishon in shalach because he's because he's he's only sending it because he thinks he's married to her. But he's not he's not sending this as a as a kiddushin, and since the first kiddushin was invalid, it was it was too little. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't work. The chain kiddush. And one little note over here in this in this little phrase over here actually is a completely different case. It's not uh, it's not that the cotton gave too little. It's just that the cotton can't make a kiddushin. Okay, so even if he gives so so cotton comes and gives a ring to to a woman, it's solid gold and uh, worth more than a shava prota for sure, but uh, and then the next day he has his bar mitzvah, and now he starts sending her gifts that are also more than a shavu prutta. But since the initial kiddushin was done was done when he wasn't a, when he wasn't a gadol, um, the initial kiddushin was invalid, and these other gifts that he's sending her are just dumb gifts, and they're not uh, they're not worth they're, they're, they don't affect the kiddushin. Okay. And those were our new Mishnahs for the day. Very simple today. Okay. Okay, get in. That's good. Okay. Yes. Hey, that's good. A bald get may be complete, completed by anyone. These are the words of Ben Danus. Rekiva says, no one may complete it except relatives who are qualified to testify elsewhere. What does a bald get? Anyone whose bindings are more than its witnesses. If one divorced his wife and said to her, you are permitted to every man except so-and-so, Reb Eliezer permits her, the sages, however, pro pro prohibit her. What shall he do? He shall take it from here, uh, take it from her and give it to her again. Uh, and, and give it to her again and say to her, you are permitted to every man if he wrote it inside, although he subsequently erased it, it's void. If he said, you are permitted to every man except father and your father, my brother and your brother, or a slave and a, a Gentile, or anyone with whom she cannot have a condition, it is valid. If he said, you are permitted to every man except if she was a widow to the Kohen Gadol, or if she was a divorcee to the Kaluta, or, or a Kaluta to the ordinary Kohen, if she was a Mamzeris or an Issanite, to a regular Jew, or if she was the daughter of a regular Jew to a Mamza or a Nisanite, to anyone with whom she can have Kedushin, even illicitly, it is void. Okay. That's Sota. It, yes? Yeah. Okay. Sota Zayn, hey. I did this last time also. 
I know as soon as we finish, you take the, get, get a new book. But between Gittin and Soda, you don't do it. And I'm waiting for you to see your hand go. I know. Because, because I've got the I've got the Seder Nashim in all, all in one volume. So we've got <laughs> I just realized that, you know, I said, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh so the, Okay. Um Zion Dalit. Hey, Zion Hey. Hey, Zion Hey. Uh, so in what manner were the blessings and the curses recited? As soon as Israel crossed the Jordan, they came to Mount Gezerim and Mount Ebel. They are that are in the vicinity of Samaria and Shechem. Shechem, they are Elon Moray, as it is said, and they are not across the Jordan. And over there it states, and Abram passed through the land until the place of Shechem and Elon Morah. And just as Elon Morah there is a Shechem, so Elon Morah here is Shechem. Six tribes ascended to the top of Mount Gezerim and six ascended to the top of Mount Ebel. While the Kohanim, the Levi, the Levium, and the Ark stood below in between. The Kohanim surrounded the Ark, the Levium surrounded the Kohan, and all of Israel were on this, on this side and that. And as it is said, and all of Israel with his elders and his officers and his judges stood on this side and on that side of the Ark. They turned their faces toward Mount Kazum and began with the blessing. Blessed is the man who does not make a graven or molded, molded image, molten image. And these are those, and, and these and those responded, Amen. They turned their faces to Mount Abel and began with the curse. Cursed is the man who makes a graven or molten image. And these and those responded, Amen. And they continued in this manner until they completed all the blessings and curses. Afterwards, they brought the stones. They uh, they built an altar, plastered it with lime, and inscribed under all the words of the Torah in seven new languages, as it is said, explain it well. Then it took the stones and came and they then took the stones and came and spent the night in their place. In what manner was the blessing of the Kohanim pronounced? In the provinces, they pronounced it as three, three blessings, but in the temple as one blessing. In the temple, he pronounced the name as it was written, but in the provinces with his uh, cognation. No, no, um, cognomen. In the provinces, the Kohanim raised their hands to shoulder height, but in the temple above their heads, except for the Kohen Gadol, Godel, who does not raise his hands above the sits. Rabbi Yehuda says, even the Kohen Gadol raises his hands above the sits, as it is stated, and Aaron raised his hands to other people and he blessed them. Just to pause a second. It, it, when they're saying they're pronouncing the, the name of Hashem as it's written, and in the and in the provinces it, 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 with a cognomen, was that the word that you used? Cognomen. C O D E N O M E N. Yes. Okay. I just learned a new word today. So did I. No, no. <laughs> cognomen, isn't it? Okay. And Zion, yeah, carry on. Okay, so we are Zion. In what manner were the blessings? Oh, we did this. No, sorry. It's the same sense. In what manner were the blessings of the Kohen Gadol recited? The attendant of the synagogue takes the Torah scroll and gives it to the head of the synagogue. The head of the synagogue gives it to the deputy Kohen Gadol, and the deputy gives it to the Kohen Gadol. Uh, gives it to the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol stands up and accepts the scroll and reads while standing. He reads from the passage that begins after the death. And the passage that begins, but on the 10th. Then he rolls up the Torah scroll and puts it in his bosom and says, There is no more that I have read as you have written here. Oh. So there's more than I have read that as, as to you written here. And he recites by heart from the book of Numbers beginning on the 10th. And then he recites above it eight benedictions for the Torah, for the sacrificial service, and for the thanksgiving for the forgiveness of sin, for the temple, for Israel, for the Kahana, and for the rest of the prayer. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, Dalit. Dala Dalit. The father has the authority over his daughter regarding her erison, whether affected by money, by document, or by relations. He has the right in her findings, her handiwork, and uh, the absolution of her vows. And he receives a bill of a divorce, but he does not enjoy the uproar during his lifetime. If she married the husband, who exceeds him in that he enjoys the uproar during her lifetime. If he is liable for her support, her ransom, and her burial, Rabbi Yehuda says, even the poorest in Israel may not hire fewer than two flutes and a lamenting woman. Um, she is still under the authority of her father until she enters the authority of her husband at marriage. If the father gave her over to the agents of the husband and she is in the authority of her husband, if the father went along with the husband's agents or if the father's agents went along with the husband's agents, she is still in the authority of her father. If the father's agent gave her over to the husband's agent, she is in the authority of her husband. The father is not liable for his daughter's support. The exposition did, did Reb Eliezer ben Azari expound before the fulfillment in the academy in Yavna. 
The sons will inherit and the daughters will be sustained just as the, the sons inherit only after their father's death. And so are the daughters supported only after their father's death. Okay. 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 Shabbos. Shabbos. Bet. A person may count his guests and desserts orally, but not from a written note. And he may cast lots with his children and the members of his household for portions at the table, provided he does not intend to wager a large portion against a small portion because of the prohibition of gambling. And Kohana may cast lots of sacrifices on Yomto, but not for portions. A person may not hire workers on the Sabbath, nor may he hire tell his friend to hire workers for him. We may not go to um, await not for uh, the Sabbath boundary for the purpose of hiring workers or bringing produce. But one may await nightfall to enable him to watch and bring produce in his hand. I have sure stated a general rule, whatever I am presented to instruct on the Sabbath, I am permitted to await nightfall for it. We, wait, um, we, we may await nightfall at the Sabbath boundary to attend to the affairs of the bride or to attend to the affairs of the deceased, to bring a coffin and shrouds for him. If a Gentile bore fruits on the Sabbath, the fruit may not be well with them unless they came from a nearby place. If they made a coffin for, coffin for him or dug a grave for him, a Jew may inter, be interred in it. But if it were done for a Jew, he may never be interred. If he made coffee. Then... Coffee, yes. <laughs> All right, Mikvos. Mikvos, uh, Olive Gibble. If tummy water fell into it and then a Tahoe person drank from it, he becomes tummy. If tummy water fell into it and then one dew from it fell, one from it into a Tahoe vessel. No, that's wrong. I said it wrong. If tummy water fell into it and then a Tahoe person drank from it, he becomes tummy. If tummy water fell into it and then one drew from it into a Tahoe vessel, it becomes tummy. If tummy water fell into it and then a loaf of truma fell into it, if he rinsed it, it became it becomes tummy, and if he did not rinse it, it becomes tahor. It remains tahor. Reb Shimon says whether he rinsed it or he did not rinse it, it becomes tummy. If a corpse fell into it or a tummy person walked through it and then a tahor person drank from it, he remains tahor. Water in water holes, water in cisterns, water in ditches, water in caves, water that seeps in that has ceased seeping, and mikvos that do not contain forty sar are all alike. During the rainy season, when they are all deemed tahor, when the ceases, when the rain ceases, those near to the town or road are deemed tame, and those who are distant are deemed tahor until such a time that there are many walkers. When do they become purified? Beishamai says when they are increased by a greater amount and they also overflow. Beishamai says if they were increased by a greater amount, even though they did not overflow. Beishamai says if they overflowed, even though they were not increased by a greater amount, they are fit for challah and for ritual riching of the hands. Right. So, so up until now, everything we've been talking about has been about uh, these little puddles of, of rainwater. Right. Right. And then they're not big enough to be a mikvah. Um, so they start out tahor, but uh, but if tame water falls into them, then they can become. <clears throat> then they then the the tame mixes with the tahor. So right. it's not, it doesn't all become tame because the water that was originally there still remains tahor, as we see. That, for example, if, a, if, if there's a dead body lying, you know, touching this water, it stays tahor. As, uh, that's what we saw in Mishnah Dalit. Right. But if tame water falls into it, then now you have a mixture of tahor and tame, and, and it's not enough to be matahor, matahor the tame water because it's not a mikvah. So that's the only mala of these paddles, is that they are not susceptible to tumma themselves, but they can be mixed with tame water, in which case it's done, it does you no good anyway. Okay. okay. Menachos. If one said, I take upon myself to bring an ola and brings a, he brings a lamb, if Eliezer ben Azariah says either a pigeon or a young doe, I specify from cattle, but I do not know what I specify. He must bring a bull and a calf. From animals, but I do not know what I specified. He must bring a bull and a calf, a ram, a kid, and a lamb. I specify, but I do not know what I specified. He adds to them a pigeon and a young doe. It, I take it upon myself to bring a toda of, of, of offering or a shalom offering. He brings a lamb. I specify from cattle, but I do not what I specified. He must bring a bull and a cow and a male cow, a calf and a female calf. From animals, but I, that I do not what I specified. He must bring a bull, a cow, a male calf and a female calf, a ram and a ewe and male calf, kid and a female kid, a male goat and a female goat, a male lamb and a female lamb. 
Maybe you should write down what he specifies. Yeah. <laughs> little, little teacher. Little teacher. <laughs> uh, if he said, I take upon myself to bring an offering, uh, an, an offer, to bring an ox, he must bring it and it's libation offering for a mana. A calf, he must bring it and it's libation offering for five. A ram, he must bring it and libation offering for two. A lamb, he must bring it and it's libation offering for a seller. If he said, an ox for a mana, he must bring it in a mana, uh, and bring it for a mana beside his libation offering. A calf for five, he must bring it for five beside his libation offering. A ram for two, he must bring it for two beside its libation offering. A lamb for a seller, he must bring it for, for um, bring it to for a seller beside its libation offering. If he said an ox for a mana, and he brought two for a mana, and he has not fulfilled his obligation, even if he has not, even if each is for a mana less a dinner. Black and he bought white. Uh, white and he brought a black. Large and he brought a small, and he has not fulfilled his obligation. Small, he brought a large one, and he has fulfilled his obligation. Rebbe says he has not fulfilled his obligation. Yeah, what if someone is poor and can't? What if, what if someone is poor and can't afford this? All well, this. Well, so so there is a there is a situation where uh, he if he makes in other words he makes a nidder and finds now that he that he can't afford it anymore. It's possible that he can have a hataris nidder. Uh, uh -huh. Um, I know when it comes to Arachin, if he if he promises to bring Erech of Ploni, and it turns out that he just can't afford what he what he promised, then he then it goes down to like one the minimum he can bring is like one dinar. Right. Um, I'm not sure if the same applies to the sacrificial animals. If he says you know, I'm going to bring that, um, I mean, we have we have it in other libations so we're um. You know, it, it can't go down to just where they bring flour. You know, if they if, if they if, if they have to. So those, so those are um, those are generally the obligatory offerings when you have when you have the variable offerings. So the so, I mean the the one the korban ole the yored is for a, a specific fate. Um, also for for a mitzora, for a yoledis, these are things where we we have an obligate uh, uh, we have an obligation to bring the korban. And there we decide. Well, if you if you're not so well off, then you can bring the cheaper korban. Um, a voluntary korban is you can bring whatever you want. Right. But if somebody promised more than he actually had, um, that's uh, that's problematic. I, I, I guess you would have to try and get a hataras nadarim, or else he would uh, have to borrow. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I have a feeling like he should be able to get a hataras nadarim on that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Enjoy. You're going running? Jim, I don't hear you talk about Jim so much anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See ya. After the Yom Tovim, right? Okay. Have a great day. Bye -bye.